Okay, in this video we're gonna talk about block algebra. Alright, just a few basics first off. Everything that's happening uh, in this problem or all the block algebra problems, they're all gonna be in Laplace domains. Okay, and as you can see these blocks G1, G2, each block represents a transfer function. So if you look at G1 here, I've explicitly stated the transfer function underneath. So the transfer function of x2 to x1 is G1 and similarly the transfer function of y to x2 is G2. But in most problems you're gonna need to find the transfer function that relates your output y to your input x okay and this is where block algebra and the use of transfer function becomes really powerful in dynamic systems and control theory so now since we know x2 is mapped uh, x1 is mapped to x2 by the transfer function g1 we can write x2 equals g1 times x1 okay and they're both in the frequency domain the Laplace domain and y is mapped by transfer function g2 operated on x2 okay now from just a matter of simple substitution you can see that y can be written as g1 times g2 x1 of s okay so I've just substituted the uh, expression for my intermediate variable and through that I'm able to find the transfer function that relates y and x1 so and g1 times g2 that's gonna be if we can write it here g1 times g2 that transfer function is just going to be k1 times k2 over tau1 s plus 1 times tau2 s plus 1 so notice how this becomes a second order transfer function and um, processes first order processes in series exhibit a, a higher order behavior okay now once I know this transfer function here, all right, I can I can redraw this block diagram as by replacing g1 and g2, I can make it cleaner. I I just want the relationship between x and y, right? So I can just replace these two blocks by g1 times g2. Okay, there there you go, much cleaner. So every time you have blocks in series, you just multiply them. I'm just going to make a note here. All right, blocks in series can be multiplied. OK, and, writ and can be multiplied and written as a single block, like what we did here. Okay. All right. Now let's look at a different example here. Now we have two inputs. Let me just drag it down a bit. Okay. Not for my lack of effort there, but okay. Now, okay. Now we have two inputs, A and B. They both add up and then they go through another process represented by the transfer function g3 and our final output variable is c so we want to see the dependence on both a and b now okay these intermediate each of these lines represents a variable so now these lines this line represents the variable a this line represents the variable b now the line after the transfer function is just going to be g1 times a of s, okay? And this right here is just going to be g2 times b of s. Nothing hard about that. And now both of these 
uh, variables are being added together so this line right here this line right here what's that gonna be that's just gonna be g1 afs plus g2 bfs okay just just addition just adding these two and finally cfs is gonna be equal to g3 times g1 AFS plus G2 BFS all right and once I expand it out I can write G3 and G1 combined into a single transfer function and G3 and G2 combined into another transfer function and here G3 times G2 is the transfer function for C over A whereas G3 times G2 is the transfer function for C of B so yeah now I know how C is going to respond to either changes in A or changes in B once I have these transfer functions okay all right now all right I'm gonna finish off with this final example where as you might notice we have a feedback loop here so a goes in it's being subtracted from another variable we don't know that yet we're still upstream as we go downstream we're acted upon by two transfer functions in series remember we said that if you have true transfer functions in series you can just combine them into a single block by multiplying them together and that's what I'm gonna do g1 times g2 all right and then you get the output and our output is B but now our output is being fed back after being multiplied by G3 so this error right here is just gonna be G3 times BFS okay now let's follow along what's happening here let me call that X and XFS is just the difference between A AFS minus G3 BFS as you can see the block right here okay all right good and X goes in gets multiplied by G1 over G2 and Y comes out all right so BFS is just equal to g1 times g2 multiplied by afs minus g3 bfs okay all right and once i rearrange this i want b the output variable on the left side and the input variable a on the right side i'll get one plus g1 times g2 times g3 all of that multiplied by b over s g1 g2 afs <laughs> all right now i've done nothing but some basic algebra here and uh, i hope you were able to follow along so the transfer function for our f system with a feedback loop notice we have a numerator term and a denominator term our numerator term is just the transfer function the transfer functions encountered in the straight direction okay so if I just go from a and sketch my way to the final output the numerator is going to be just a product of those transfer functions whereas the uh, denominator if you have a depends on whether you have a negative or a positive here depends on whether you have a depends whether you're taking the difference or just adding them up so it's gonna be either plus or minus the transfer functions in the straight path multiplied by the transfer function 
in the feedback loop. So notice we only have one transfer function in the feedback loop. All right. Now let me just show you one more example of a feedback just so that you can understand it better. And this time we're going to choose both. We're going to choose adders plus and plus. Okay, and we're going to have two transfer functions g1 and g2. You have x as your input and y as your output and y is being taken multiplied by two let's multiply it by two transfer functions this time g g3 and g4 okay before being fed back now i can already tell you that the transfer function of y over x okay let's see what's happening in the straight path in the straight path I'm encountering g1 and g2 okay so in the numerator I'm gonna have g1 times g2 all right let's see what's happening now since since I have a plus sign here I'm gonna have a 1 minus everything that's in the straight path which is g1 times g2 multiplied by everything that's in the feedback path which is g3 times g4 all right so now let's let's just quickly give you the proof the hard way the brute force way now this right here this variable this line right here is g3 times g4 yfs okay so y of s equals the addition of x of s plus x of s plus g3 times g4 y of s and then that's being first multiplied by g1 and then g2 okay now once you expand it out you're gonna get g1 g2 x of s plus g1 g well sorry this was oh yeah g1 g2 times g3 g4 y of s and once again simple algebra and this is what you're gonna get g1 g2 over 1 minus g1 g2 g3 g4 so every time you have a feedback loop you can skip some hassle and just follow this shortcut method that I showed you here and as you can see uh, the x here we're getting the exact same result all right hope this was helpful and good luck